welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Our hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 13. Today we're going to talk about plans, how we design and create them, and we're joined tonight by our guest host, Brian Grella of Garage Woodworks. How are you tonight, hey, Brian? Doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, thanks for coming. I mean, I'm glad you agreed to this. <laughs> Not a problem. I mean, you know, for a couple uh, small timers like us. <laughs> yeah, right. So. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll ask Brian like I did uh, Steve. I th- did you get the check that we sent you? Um, is that in the mail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably going to bounce like Steve's probably did. But look, we still haven't sent David's and, and Mark's yet, so I don't think we sent April's either, so shh. They did it out of the kindness of their heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Brian took some convincing. <laughs> All right. Brian, you want to introduce yourself for the people that yeah. don't know who you are? Yeah, sure. I'm Brian Grella, and I um, operate GarageWoodworks.com, where I produce woodworking videos, uh, how-to and project-related videos, and I do those probably between two to four times uh, per month. That's what I try to do anyway. And uh, it's kind of a, a hobby for me still. But it, Garage Woodworks is actually a small business, but it's kind of a, a, a it's not my main source of income. Uh, I do it mostly for fun. Um, and I've been doing the website since 2006, and I've been on YouTube creating videos since 2009. So um, with regard to, I guess, the, all the woodworking podcasters out there, I'm, I'm probably one of the older or longest-running shows on the Internet. Yes, you were one of the few that I found right off the bat. <laughs> one of the granddaddies. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mark was doing it at the time, and Matt uh, Vanderlist was doing his. And I honestly, I didn't. There may have been more at the time, but I didn't. I didn't know of uh, of, of any others. But uh, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were others. Yeah, but we don't care about them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just, we're we're talking about you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to remind you guys: if you listen to the show on iTunes, please give us a five star rating. It helps us reach a greater audience. Um, so, uh, let's talk about what's going on in our shops. Um, me, I'm still working on the, uh, drawer arm wall. It's taking a little longer than what I thought. Um, but I'm actually getting out in the shop for a few hours every morning. I'm working on it and I expect it to be done within probably the next three days. Um, just to rehab an old piece of furniture is taking a lot longer than what I really planned on it. Yeah, it always does. <laughs> but it's coming along, and, you know, I don't paint a lot of things, but I'm doing, like, a, a really nice distress or vintage, like, paint job on it uh, for my wife. She usually likes bright colors, so. Cool. She already knows what it is, because, unfortunately, she walked out about two days before our anniversary and saw it, and <laughs> I couldn't hide it. I couldn't play, go away. You don't know what it is. <laughs> so... Hi, right, Drew. What's going on in your shop? Or have you even gotten back out in your shop? <laughs> what was that, a dig? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> um, uh, I, right now, I'm cleaning up my shop. I've got to get it back to organizational standards because I haven't really touched it since my last video of the butterfly house with my daughter. And working with a four-year-old in the shop, it's kind of inevitable that the shop's going to get kind of messy because she likes to take everything out and play with it and uh <laughs> they don't after, back yeah and after the the project was done she didn't want to help me clean up i don't understand oh, imagine that, that. <laughs> yeah i don't i'm not sure they're ever going to grow out of that <laughs> so that uh that's what's going on it's, it's mainly just cleaning up I, I uh plan on setting up my cnc this weekend doing a little unboxing video for Rockler and um, hopefully get it up and running before, uh, I don't know, probably two weeks from now, I guess, when my next video will probably come out. I'm going to kind of take it a little bit slower on my 
video productions just so I can take my time with them. What? What's going to be your next project? Um, and will it include the CNC? Yeah, I think it will. My my mother in law is needing some drawers for her kitchen, kind of like that uh, the drawers that I made for my bathroom. I don't know if you remember that video or not, but yeah, I, I just basically converted a cabinet into a bunch of drawers that were just open space above, and I just needed a, a place to put more stuff. So I think I'll make her some drawers because she did mention to me that she wants them. And the whole Rock and H brand came from that side of the family, my my wife's side of the family. Uh, the actual farm that my mother-in-law lives on is the Rock and H farm. Hmm. So these drawers, I'm going to take the drawer bottoms and engrave the Rock and H brand on each one of them. Oh, so every, cool. every time she opens the drawer, the brand will be face up. Oh, that's a neat idea. Yeah, that is. You gonna make the drawer bottoms out of plywood or a hardwood? I haven't decided yet. Um, I thought about maybe half inch ply because she'll probably use it for canned goods and things like that. Uh, but I'll probably use like an offset tongue and groove for the the way the bottom attaches to the sides. I I think if you'd go with like something a little darker. Like a, maybe a walnut ply or um, something like that. Once you engrave in it, it would be uh, pretty cool it'd to see stand the two, out. yeah it's to see the huh. two different colors. That's a good um, idea. Or or I mean, if you want to go the route of either like staining it or painting it, um, and then uh, routing your logo in there. That way, just your logo pops out a little more. Um, I, Some, yeah, I think it would probably look, look pretty decent. I mean, I'm not sure I want to go the paint route. But <laughs> well, paint's also yeah. probably a little bit cheaper than a walnut sheet of plywood. Yeah, especially when I don't have it specifically super handy right you now. Do you not have a plywood dealer near you? Oh, I do. I just It's hard to get to because my job goes until 4.30 and they close at, I think, 4. Uh, no, I, have to leave. I have to leave early. They don't do weekends? No, no, they're oh, strictly Monday through Friday, and it kind of sucks. Ouch. Well, I hear of a day of vacation coming in your future. <laughs> or uh, is, is that a cough, Drew? Are you getting sick? No, it's not a cough. <laughs> are, are you getting sick? Yeah, you I don't think you have to take, good. Yes, I think you have to take a sick day. <laughs> it's, more, <laughs> it's more like strep. Oh, so not a sick. now you've got to take a, a week. week. Yeah, sick week. <laughs> All right, Brian, well, what do you got going on in your shop? Yeah, I'm uh, kind of like Drew. I've been um, – have a CNC going on in my wood shop right now. I've uh, started on it on last Saturday, and I've been working on it in the evenings through the week, and I finally have it finished. Uh, last night, I, I wrapped it up. So I still need to – it's from Inventables, the uh, X car. so I still need to learn the software and figure out how to use this guy. I've, I've been playing around with it a little bit tonight, this evening – but uh, definitely need more practice with the software, that's for sure. Do you plan on using their open source software? Yeah, whatever they have available uh, online, the free stuff. Yeah. And, Drew, you, the one you have is not the X-Carve, right? No, it's uh, actually a Piranha from, uh, from Rockler. I'm, I had it, up on my <laughs> had it up on here a minute ago, but um, it is basically a consumer base uh, kind of CNC. It's actually very small. It's about a 12 inch by what I can try to remember. What, what did I say? 28 inch long table. And uh, I mean, it uses a Bosch. Uh, what I think it's a Colt router. Yeah, the Bosch Colt. Mm. The, their mm-hmm. tr- like trim router. Yeah, and it's yeah. not equipped with dust collection necessarily, uh, but it's got a T track table, and uh, it's very it's very handy for smaller items. And I mean, even drawer bottoms would would fit just fine. Do you do you have the Bosch trim router? Or are you gonna have to buy it? I might have to buy it. I mean, it it doesn't say that it's included in here, and I haven't taken it out of the box yet to find out. <laughs> I'm gonna probably say it's not included. <laughs> I would say not. <laughs> but I've but, heard uh, nothing but good things about that Bosch for other small handheld uh, routing needs. So. Well, I'm very anxious to. Is that, is that the Colt you mean? The Colt? Yeah, the Bosch yeah. Colt. 
that's the one. Yeah, I have I have that one. It's it's a really nice little little router. I dig it. Really easy to, to handle. Fits right in your palm. It's pretty cool. Did Brian the CNC that you got? Did you get the optional uh, mounting bracket for the Bosch Colt, or are you using the spindle that came with it? I'm using the. I think they call it the Quiet Cut spindle. It's yeah. the, the the standard spindle. Um, does does it have a um, like a collet adapter for it to fit um, like quarter quarter inch collets? Yeah, or that's inch a bits? great question. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure you can go up to quarter inch bits, but uh, I this I ordered the uh, a, a like a starter pack or starter kit of bits with this one. They only the largest size. Actually, they're all eighth inch uh, size bits for the for the collet. So. I'm pr- I need to look into that again, but I'm pretty sure it can go- it can accept a uh, quarter inch collet. Yeah, just ex- like watching David Picciuto's latest video on um, building the guitar. And if y'all haven't seen that, right. you need to go see it. That's awesome. It looks like the spindle that that he's using, which is that quiet uh, spindle. It looks like those bits are quarter inch shank. So it could be. That's that's why I was just curious. Um, you know, because that. Once you start spinning at those higher speeds, um, you know, the quarter inch is definitely going to heat up a lot less than the eighth inch. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I need to look into that again. And if they, I'm pretty sure they do have it for this um, spindle. And if they do, I'm going to definitely need to order one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, then you don't have to replace um, or, or buy additional set of bits. You can use what you have that, you know, will already fit in the Colt. So... Right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So that's that's kind of what I was looking at because some of my smaller bits now that I'm going to start buying, I'm going to buy in that quarter inch um, because my DeWalt will take both a half inch and quarter inch. Okay. And I want to buy those smaller bits. That way I can use it on a trim router or a CNC when I decide to get one. Okay. So, huh. That way I don't have to duplicate cost um, buying – Eighth inch shank bits. Yeah, that makes sense. Save some, save some cash. Yeah, save cash for so I can buy more wood, do more projects. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Spend so, money to save money. Yeah. And speaking of that, I didn't even talk to the wife, but I kind of already found a sander on Craigslist tonight. I found the uh, rigid oscillating spindle sander. A dude about ten minutes away is selling it for a hundred bucks, and he's used it five times. Oh, I, I love mine. So, yeah, well, I mean, it's a, worth it. Okay, you you've used it five times, and it's a hundred dollars off. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go do it. Yeah, so I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. I just haven't decided when I was gonna break the news to my yeah. wife because I just <laughs> went and bought a new TV last week because our TV went out in the house. So, yeah, but that was out of necessity. Yeah, that's what I think too. I mean, I <laughs> I told her I said, look, because she came to me and she she's really wanting to get into like working out again and she was like well can you help me kind of develop a plan i was like hey honey i'm about to start doing p90x again she's like oh i'll do that with you i was like but we need a tv because (laughs) i have to play it on my computer because i have the digital copies and mirror it to the computer or to the tv and she was like oh i was like well look i mean it's a think of it as a workout tool (laughs) there you go Business expense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I get home, and she already is looking at the email and seeing that I've ordered wall mounts and stuff for this TV. So the price just kept going up, and she was like, well, yeah. And we're, we're planning on going out of town the next two weekends um, to Dallas, and then we're going to take my son to SeaWorld in San Antonio. And she – uh She's not liking that I went. Are the purse strings of, starting to tighten? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> they can tighten after tomorrow, after I buy the sander. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what did you spend money on? Nothing? Yeah. Well, you need I it mean, for a project, right? I mean, you need it yeah. for a specific project. It's I mean, for your arm wall. Yeah. G- yeah. It, generally, if I go by and put it in to the shop and hoping that she doesn't listen to this to find out my secret, <laughs> she doesn't usually know that it wasn't there in the first place. Oh, there you go. Because I because I to say I, she's I, not a listener. I well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of hide it, 
and then about I, I kind of work it out slowly but surely, and I get it all dusty to make it look like it's not new. So that's my <laughs> trick. Interesting way. And honey, yeah. if you're listening to this, I'm I'm just joking. I I don't do that <laughs> at all. A big joke. <laughs> you're you're a little late. <laughs> just I'm just pulling pulling your strings, babe. <laughs> all right, so let's get into the the topic of today's show and kind of talk about um, how we go about designing our projects and how we create the plans for them. And that's even assuming that we all create plans. Mm -hmm. What's Um, that? (laughs) Well, okay. Some kind of like drawing, rendering, whether you do it on the napkin or crayon on a napkin. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, yours is probably on like that primary school paper. That's like one inch thick, you know, the dotted line down the middle. Hey, I use college rule paper. There you oh, go. getting fancy. <laughs> All right, so Brian, how do you go about designing your projects and putting them into a plan? Well, usually I start out with uh, asking my wife exactly how she wants it because uh, if I design it and without asking her, I'm going to have to redesign it anyway. So <laughs> that's how I usually start. <laughs> and uh, I'll start usually on a piece of paper, actually. And then from there, I'll go to uh, TurboCAD. And I'll work everything out in TurboCAD, and I'll get all the uh, the widths and the lengths, everything down. And uh, then start, if there's curves in, a, in the design, I'll start adding the curves. And then once I'm happy with the, uh, the design, I'll export it as an SKP file or a SketchUp file. And I, I like to view my models uh, in SketchUp over TurboCAD. I think it's a much nicer interface uh, to view the models. And actually, from SketchUp, I also prefer to use those files when I, if I'm going to sell plans or if I'm going to give plans away or if I'm going to use the model. A lot of times, I use my models in my videos where I'll rotate the models in the corner of the video, for example. And that's a SketchUp file that I'm using there. So I usually... Once I'm happy with the model in TurboCAD, I'll, and I'll export it to SketchUp, and that's usually um, when I'm finished with the model. I don't do any modeling within uh, SketchUp. I don't change anything once I'm in there. And that's, uh, that's pretty much my workflow. Um, and then from there, uh, I try to stick to my plans when I go to actually build the projects, but uh, I'm not incredibly picky um, when it comes to widths. For example, if I'm if I'm planning down a rail or a, uh, for a, for a project, and in the, in my SketchUp file it's three quarters of an inch. Um, if I'm planning down and I get to say 0. 0.9 inches, and I'm happy with the way the faces look, I'll a lot of times I'll stop. I won't keep going down to three quarters of an inch just because it's in the plan. Uh, so non-critical things like that, I I kind of uh, I'm not a stickler when it comes to sticking to my plans, but. Uh, widths and dimension, the overall dimensions of the piece, I uh, usually will stay pretty close. Okay. It, which I agree with that. I mean, I like to have as much thickness to the piece um, as possible. Yeah. Just, you know, when you get down to a three quarter inch, you really start having to be very precise on joinery because you don't have a lot of room for error. Um, exactly. You get much below that. Yep, that's so. that, and the, 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 you lose stability too. I think uh, the the thinner you go, the more uh, susceptible the boards are to uh, to warping on you. Especially if you're not going to be assembling the piece within a you know a few days of milling them on or planning them down to thickness. If they're going to be sitting in your shop for you know a week or two after milling them to thickness, you're you know you could uh, you could have some problems. Yeah, and you're putting you it lightly to, there, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> You may have to remill at some point as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what a lot of guys do. They will, um, for example, uh, they'll take if they're going down to if they need to go down to three quarters of an inch, they might go down to, you know, point nine. Let it sit for a week and then take it down to its final thickness. I don't usually do that. Um, the only time I will let it sit in my shop for a while is if, you know, I just need to actually be away from my shop for a while. I don't do it intentionally usually. <laughs> Yeah, I don't either, um, but exactly like you said, I didn't intend to jump right into um, a miter, not a miter, a uh, mantle build that I'm 
uh, working on. So I started milling the lumber in, in stages um, and letting it sit for about a week between. That way, because uh, I'm going from probably a one and an eighth inch thick piece of maple, and I'm actually going all the way down to three quarters inch because how I designed the, this mantle is based off of three quarter inch stock. Okay. I'm going to throw all my measurements off if I go thicker. Um, yeah, and so I'm doing that in idea. stages. That way it doesn't move and pretzel on me. Yep. Um, especially because I'm using some maple that I've had in the shop for about four years now. Um, wow. And it was actually stock that my dad had and he got it from my grandfather. So it's probably been, it's probably almost a 20 year old, um, stack of lumber, but I probably got about a hundred board feet of it. Wow. Um, and I've never, I don't have enough to complete like a table or anything that like I've been working on here. And so I, I figured I'll, I'll start incorporating it into, into other projects. And so I just decided I'm going to build this mantle out of uh, all this maple. So I uh, definitely don't want that potato chip on me. I want it to turn out pretty nice. Right, yeah, and take your time with it. So as far as me, I I don't know. I, I, I don't really – I don't start anywhere besides SketchUp. I go straight into SketchUp. Mm-hmm. Um, Show off. <laughs> no, no. It <laughs> takes me a long time. I'll probably – to – Work on, in fact, I just designed a green and green, uh, no, what would I do? A um, arts and craft style, a mission style corner desk for my brother. And it, I, I, the, bottom, the bottom rails are going to be curved, have a slight um, arc in them. And that took me, I'm going to say roughly about eight hours to get that entire thing done. Huh. And... So it's definitely not by any means quick. I still stumble around and I have to still Google when I'm trying to do something specific. Um, but I just haven't found the need or the necessity to start in another program. I do think I'm going to give uh, my iPad a shot and see what I can do. Because a lot of times I'll have my iPad while I'm out doing errands uh, or sitting at the doctor's office or, you know, wherever. And that way I can just start designing in the iPad um, and kind of just get basics down. So I know roughly what dimensions and stuff I want to move with because I do, I do all my designing. I I do everything in SketchUp. So if I make something and I don't like how something looks and I got to go back and change it, well, that may change the previous three steps that I have to go back and change as well. Right. So it it takes quite a bit longer because I'm making a bunch of adjustments. You know, if I already had those laid out and I didn't have to make those adjustments, it might be quicker. And that's definitely the key, um, especially if you're doing this for any kind of profit, which I do. Um, so spending eight hours because I don't – that design time is free. I don't charge a customer for that design time. Because I, they, you know, I'll sit down and I'll discuss what they want, you know, kind of how they want it to look. I'll design that. I'll send it back. I'll show them that 3D rendering. If they don't like it, I'll go back and make adjustments and send it back. And then that's how I pull in that customer. They see it. Okay, wow. Wow, that's really what it's going to look like. Now I know why he's charging me $800 for this table hmm. because it's going to look like that. Um, and, and so I kind of figure that I kind of use that as that marketing tool to bring in those customers. So to, to streamline that workflow would definitely help be able to push a little more projects through the shop, make a little more money. Um, but other than that, how, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Any other way to like that? I get my design, you know, I'll scroll Pinterest, the internet, in fact, I'll even go walk the uh, furniture stores just to get some kind of design inspirations um, or to maybe like see the corner desk and see, okay, that's, you know, three feet squared, uh, really triangled because they cut off half of it. Um, 
And so I, I kind of walk around and, and do my searches to f- kind of figure out those numbers before I put them into SketchUp um, and kind of see what I want things to look like. Right. And incorporate different elements. Um, but like I said, it all goes in a SketchUp the first time. And I usually, I'm like, all right, I'll work on it for an hour or two. And that's not what happens. Once I sit down, I get stuck in it. And <laughs> there goes my entire day. So I bet you're a furniture salesman's best friend, aren't you? Um, <laughs> he sees you coming. He's like, oh, Lord, he's got a tape measure. <laughs> no, because I generally... When we go buy, if I go buy any fur, furniture, then yeah, I may take a tape measure, but I don't, I don't want to tell them in around me. Don't <laughs> bug me. Look, you come up, introduce yourself. If you're friendly, give me your card. When I'm ready to make the purchase, I'll come find you. <laughs> and that's it. I, I, I'm literally their best friend because I come and I say, this is what I want right here. This is where I want it delivered. I want it delivered this time. You, they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to sell me. They didn't have to walk me around the showroom. They didn't have to, oh, lay down on this bed and see if you like it. No, I did all that on my own at my own pace. And they just get the commission for it. <laughs> but there, there is – so we're going to um, Dallas, not this weekend, but the, the first weekend of August. And um, I'm going up there. I'm actually going to take – the Plano police department test on Saturday, the first after that, I'm hoping to go to Nebraska furniture mart. Um, if you guys haven't heard anything about it, it's like a massive, like six story furniture place that starts at the, like the bottom levels, like your cheaper furniture and it just gets more expensive the further you move up. Hmm. Um, and I haven't been yet. My father went and he said, that, I mean, there's just so much that, you're going to easy – if you're just in there looking and browsing, you're going to be in there several hours. So I'm going to try to do that in two weekends, um, hopefully come back with some good design inspiration. Uh, not that I have time to start designing any other projects because I have projects lined out for the next year. <laughs> but, and the way they go, that's actually probably two or three years because that, that hall table – there drew is still not done i wasn't gonna say anything i I, i've I've rubbed it in enough (laughs) well look you beat me to the punch you got your assembly table built (laughs) but look come on let's let's be real i mean you challenged me i I know look i had to to finish look we're gonna figure out another project i'm gonna challenge you again and and i'm i'm gonna win can't be a birdhouse. It's got to be something a little more ex- extensive. <laughs> okay, let's well, let's make a pen. A pen, really? Uh, you know, I'm going to beat you to that because you, you don't, don't even have, have a lathe. Pens, and you don't even have a lathe. <laughs> I do have a lathe. I just don't have it set up. <laughs> so, all right, Drew. Well, how do you do your plans? <clears throat> well, after some ex- extensive design research with my four-year-old uh we 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 select the appropriate crayon and the thickest napkin we can find there you go and okay. uh yeah do you, prefer, do you prefer the thicker crayons or the or the thinner crayons? i don't i don't like them them big ones because they give me carpal tunnel i, I like them little ones <laughs> well i mean that's if, if you weren't so old you would oh, yeah, get carpal tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> wait wait a minute how old are you brian me he's yeah. 21 yeah right. I am forty four. <laughs> okay, see, I'm I'm like the Jan of the Brady Bunch here. I'm the I don't even I'm know the who's the child. youngest. Huh? Who's the youngest? I'm thirty. I'm thirty five. So no, who's the youngest in the Brady Bunch? <laughs> oh good lord! I, I don't know their ages. Probably Cindy or Bobby. Okay, Cindy. Then that would be the Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even thirty yet. Ha! Huh. I can picture You're you not? with curly hair. No, I'm not. I'm twenty nine. I just turned 29 two weeks ago. Wow. He's a pup. And Look, I feel little, about 60. Slightly older pup. Back problems, <laughs> knee problems, all sorts of problems. I feel about 60. Well, you look it, too. I was just going to say that. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> look, if we all had that nice, luscious head of hair that you have, 
Don't be hating the hair. <laughs> um, but ba- basically what I do for my designing is the I, I, I'm not familiar enough with SketchUp. I haven't really taken an extensive amount of time to learn it. I've tried to learn it, but since I put myself on time crunches, I, I really don't go much further than that. Um, I've used a program on my iPad uh, called iDesign, and I've used it for about mm, five or six years now. Hmm. And uh, it's it's like a CAD program, and I don't know what TurboCAD is like, so I really can't compare it to that, but it is like a, a, a CAD program, and you can draw three-dimensional or two-dimensional. Uh, three-dimensional is a little more advanced for me. I haven't learned how to do that yet. Uh, but a lot of my plans are in two-dimensional states. I'll draw the tops, the sides, the fronts, hmm. Um, underneath if I want to and incorporate multiple angles like that in my plans whenever I put them together and I tend to put them all together with uh, uh, like a word word format or pages if it's on Mac and I'll position the, the plan pictures around and do the descriptions next to them but it takes me roughly <sighs> probably a good three days to design late at night, like I'll be laying in bed just working on a design, and that's roughly about mm, an hour and a half to two hours each night. Hmm. And uh, then I'll put the plan together and put it on my website. And I, like you, Jeremy, I used to uh, compose them before I would submit them to a, a customer just so they could see what their particular project would look like. And before I even did that, I would draw it on paper and try and make it as uh, clean and in a two-dimensional form as, as I could. Um, but technology is advancing and SketchUp's kind of, kind of proof of it. I mean, it's kind of yeah, like absolutely. a, kind of like a, uh, normal consumer type program that most people can pick up if, if they know the basics. Uh, so they're trying to get everyone that is in designing kind of involved in using technology versus drawing it out on graph paper and yeah. things like that. Well, I don't know any of anybody that still draws it on graph paper minus one woodworker, and that's the down-to-earth woodworker. He still, I mean, he gets out all the drafting tools and pencils and the big graph paper, and he, I mean, he does it out. I mean, he makes he makes it look like a SketchUp drawing. Hmm. Um so if you haven't seen that, I mean, he's in most of his videos, he shows at least some portion of it. Um, I uh, that's the only person I know that that still does it by hand. And I think that would actually take me longer to do it if I did it by hand. I don't know. I, I, oh yeah, if because you're not computer savvy though. Yeah, it, it would probably be the quicker way or easier way. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, good point. Well, I'm I'm very OCD, so like if my lines aren't perfectly straight um, or or intersecting, like everything would have to intersect on on the grid lines, um, <laughs> or like it it would be very very overwhelming for me because we would be there all day because something wouldn't look right because of the grip the the graph paper. So, you laugh, Brian, but uh, I've, I've I've talked with this guy for twenty six weeks now, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I learn more and more about this OCD for me. <laughs> Look, my wife had to many, many, many discussions. I finally have somewhat let my closet go. My, I kid you not, my closet used to be all my shirts would be by style meaning t-shirt polo shirt button down collar and within that style it was done by colors and it would be shades light from left to right lighter to darker and then all my blue jeans the same way everything i've kind of let it go now it's just by style i don't go into the whole color (laughs) that's progress (laughs) I don't see myself going anywhere past that. I'm curious <laughs> what style. How do you define style? Well, is sty- it t- t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts? What, what, what is it? Yes, yeah, so it would be like t-shirts and then like a long sleeve t-shirt. Um, then it would be like 
polo shirts, and then it'd be like Under Armour style polo shirts, full button down <laughs> shirts. So it's, it's. I bet junk drawers don't exist in your house. There's one. <laughs> there's one, and it's it's in the kitchen. <laughs> well, I lie. There's. We have this like blue Rubbermaid bin that we, when we moved a year ago, we got rid of our dresser, um, our big like arm wall with the mirror and everything. Um, we got rid of that and we put everything in this blue like Rubbermaid thing that's sitting right behind me. And every day it seems to collect more junk and it <laughs> bugs me. In fact, <laughs> I was just going through it today. Like, it has all my son's schoolwork from this last year in it. And, like, let's just say there's going to be a lot of stuff in the trash over the next few days out of this thing because it is bugging me <laughs> to no end. Like, if if I didn't think there was anything important in there, I would just throw the entire thing in the trash. But there's probably a birth certificate or you know, something <laughs> in there. Yeah, that would get you in trouble. with the there's, yeah. there's something in there, I'm sure. Oh, that's so. funny. I bet your junk drawer even has a label on it. No, it doesn't. But junk drawer. It it doesn't. <laughs> um, it it is in a a white plastic bin, and if anything overfills that bin, it it pretty much finds its way in the trash. And I do go through it periodically just to get rid of junk. Seems how it's a junk drawer. So. One thing that I've wanted to do with creating plans, and and I know I've talked to you about this, Drew, is I want to get into making um, kind of like the the two D cut cutting guides, um, you know, broken down by the different size stock that I would use. Oh, for like plywood. Yeah, for plywood's a good example. Um, or if I'm using um, two by fours, you know, and I'm going to cut different things out of that, you know, showing like. Ooh, how Which I'm gonna get, get out of it. Yeah, how I'm gonna get each piece out. I think and Jay Bates do that. does that a lot. Jay Bates does that a lot. Um is there, is there a plug in for SketchUp for there's, that? There's there's not because no. you can do 2D renderings in SketchUp. Mm-hmm. It is quite difficult to do. Um and in fact everybody I've talked to, I've reached out to uh David Picciuto, Steve Ramsey, Jay Bates, they all do theirs in um a vector program uh, hmm. like Illustrator. Um, and there's a number of free vector programs out there. I just haven't got into it yet. Um, but I, that, that's something that's a goal on the next project that I'm going to start designing that I'll, I'll do that. And I don't know what project that will be, but whatever it is, I'm going to attempt to create a 2D rendering of of like the cutting guides um for that just because i think for myself i'll kind of have a better idea and how to lay it out once i get the stock in into the shop as well as people that look at my plans they'll be like all right well he used eight two by fours and he doesn't just go you know they don't just go cut up a, a two by four then realize that they don't have enough because they didn't cut it a certain way Hmm. So, not a bad idea. And and I and I want to do that because I do kind of what Drew does. I take my SketchUp and I export um, a, a 2D graph out of it in several different. Like I'll break up my model. I'll do like on a table. I'll do the top and then the base. I'll do stretchers, all in a different section of SketchUp, and then create a 2D uh, picture of it. And then I all import them into like a. Uh, Word document and create a plan. So, and then make that into a PDF. So when somebody prints it out, they'll have like all ten sheets, and they'll have material list and all that in there. Hmm. Yeah, each one of my plans is it varies between ten and sometimes eighteen pages. Yeah, that's why I haven't got any of your plans. I just watch the <laughs> videos and try to figure it out. There's too much reading there. <laughs> it's got pictures. That's a guy's thing. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, mine aren't anywhere near as long as, as that. But I think that plan plan making just kind of evolves. Um, because when I first started, it was one page. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I 
I don't know about you, Drew, but when I start designing something, it's not design and build like three days later. Like Brian, who who wants to build the long on the sofa table? Oh. <laughs> and then three days later, I've already started the sofa table. Man, don't give anybody any time to to prepare. Yeah, I jumped into that one pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to do another one of those, I think, and uh, maybe get the plans out a little bit more in advance and uh, get more people involved, more than me yeah. <laughs> involved. I mean, I definitely, you know, and I and I think I said something to you about it. Like, I, I think we need to do something like uh, kind of figure out what we want to do, like another sofa table, coffee table, whatever it is, and then – do kind of a rough, here's the rough design of it. And then we all put our own spin on it. Um, yeah, and, I like and, that. Do, and do a build along like that. So people kind of see a variation in joinery. Um, you know, just like we talked on last episode, you know, that way, you know, you'll probably use different joints than I will. In fact, you will, cause I no way I'm going to build your, uh, slot mortiser. <laughs> no way. So I'm just going to go out there and use my festal domino. And oh, you have one of those? Okay, I, I do. Cool. Well, but I have one. I've had it for a few months now. I still have yet to use it, mm. and I've still yet to buy dominoes. So, I in fact, I've really I want I want to figure out how to make my own dominoes. There you go. Um, That's probably what I would do if I owned just, one of those. Just for the pure fact that, I mean, if I'm going to use the small dominoes, that's not a problem. I'll buy them. But on like a larger, maybe if I want to use it for a breadboard. I want to go with a wider domino and the biggest they have is you, I think about, um, 55 millimeters, you know, and I want to get into, you know, I, I want maybe an inch or two inches wide, mm-hmm. um, for more registration points. So, but, you know, I think if we do a project like that, you know, we're, we're all going to use different joinery yeah. and we'll all have a different design aspect to it. Hopefully. I mean, I don't think we all think alike. But <laughs> I actually use when I as going back to how I, I mean not to um, cut you off, but uh, where I when I d- do my design, I actually will leave the joinery off. I don't even have that in the design. Yeah, I don't either. So I, I know I've seen a lot of people they'll actually cut in the mortises and have, they'll have the tenon and right in the design, and I just I don't get that detailed. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'm kind of the opposite there. I, I do put the the joinery in after I figured out the overall design. Uh, like I'll put my rabbits, my dados and, uh, sliding dovetails, things like that. I'll throw that in the design just so people can see the options on what they can do. Yeah. It's probably not a bad idea. I mean, I, I probably would like to, but it's, you know, it's just, it's more of a time investment. I see, you know, it would, it's got to slow you down a little bit. I would yes, it does. It does. I mean, if, if there's going to be, some kind of groove dado rabbit something cut into my stock like that. Um, then I will include that in, in the design and mm-hmm. that more it helps me. So I know, okay, this piece really needs to be, you know, an extra three quarter inches cause it's going into some dados. Right. Um, but as far as mortise and tenon, I don't include that. I'll just put a little side note on and i'll say cut stock an extra inch and a half for three quarter inch tenons or whatever um that way i know to add that extra stock when i actually go to cut the lumber idea yeah i like that Um, and and i do that in sketchup um right next to the uh measuring tool is the text tool and i i use that all the time to put in notes um, to specific projects because you can, I mean, it'll draw an arrow to right where you want. Right. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's very easy to trace. All right, that's talking about that piece of the project. Right. So, do you guys make uh, cut lists for your projects after you get your dimensions? Do you do, you do a detailed cut list so people can just go in and, and cut their material? I, I don't. I, um, I don't either. Yeah, I, in fact, when I, when, after I design something that I'm going to build, I would generally I, – I overbuy big time. So when I go to the lumber yard, I have a general idea of how much I'm going to need. And uh, I usually end up with uh, a considerable amount of extra, which I'll use in the next project. And that's actually how 
a lot of my projects end up being made out of cherry. <laughs> I take a lot of heat for that. It's because <laughs> when I build something, I'll build a project out of cherry and I'll go to the lumber yard and I'll overbuy. So now that I have extra cherry from the last project, I'll use it on the next one. And it, it becomes this vicious cycle of using the same lumber for every project. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to get myself to break out of that habit. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I, I, like, like you said, you kind of have a general, and that's the key word there, general idea of what you're going to what you're gonna buy. Right. And I kind of almost buy double. <laughs> it's, I it's, come close to it. It, yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of that way. It's like I'll I'll buy double and I'll get it home, and by the time I'm done with the project, I look at my scrap bin and what I overbought. Yeah. I'm like, whoops. <laughs> Another project. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to go to lumberyard next time. Right. <laughs> I tend to buy. I don't necessarily buy way over, but I buy a little bit, and I do it more on purpose because I live probably an hour from. Oh, nice. My man. hardwood dealer. And yeah. it's probably not, if it was just no traffic hit go, I'll probably be in there 30 minutes. But it's in downtown Houston. It's in the Houston Heights. So, and it's, it took me probably a good 45 minutes to find this place, like once I was there the first time, because it's mm-hmm. in a like neighborhood. You have to drive down through some neighborhoods, and it's just like in the back of a neighborhood. Well, that's um, weird. Huh. It is, but this place is huge. So they must have built a neighborhood around this place at one point. Uh huh. Um, but so I generally buy. You know, most people say buy about ten percent over for waste. I right. probably go about twenty five to fifty percent over, just so I know that I don't have to go back. Right. And, and I started doing that based off one project, and I was building a toy chest that I had to deliver in Odessa, Texas, which is ten hours from where I live. And I was getting ready. I was like two days away from delivering it. I was putting on the trim around the bottom. And lo and behold, did I cut a piece wrong. I cut the opposing miter the opposite direction of what I was supposed to. (laughs) And I was like an inch too short of having enough to recut that piece. So I had to drive all the way back up there for a two-foot section (laughs) of birch. Not good. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so I started I was like, all right, I'm going to start buying a little over. And that's, that's why I want to get into making, you know, like a, not necessarily a cut list, but those cutting guides. That way I know, all right, if, if I cut it this certain way, I'm going to have enough material. Um, but other than that, any other list I make is just a materials list. And that's, that's not, that's more for me. So I can say it and I can go and I know. All right, I know I need so many feet of, you know, a two by four um, or, or eight quarter stock or sixteen quarter stock, just so I'm not sitting there trying to like figure it up on my SketchUp drawing while I'm at the lumber yard. Right. Because the more time I spend there, the more money I'm spending, and that's not necessarily good. Because then I'm not going to make any money on a project. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's move in. We got some kickback from this last show. From Paul Mayette. Good old Paul. Yeah, I mean, a great listener. He listens to everyone, comments all the time. In fact, I was wondering if he was sick or something because he didn't comment on the show that we had with April um, oh. about a month ago. Paul, you hear this? So, <laughs> we caught you. I, I was wondering what was, what was going on with you, Paul. But uh, he wrote in on YouTube and told us, good show, guys, good topics. And he said, I think I've noticed a lot of YouTube woodworkers – in air quotes here, pulling back lately. It's really difficult to put out a video project every week. Matt Cremona is a machine. Even Jay Bates has slowed down, Nick Ferry, April, and some others. It's best to have good quality over mass quantities. Personally, I haven't put out a build video in a while. Good stuff, guys, and thanks. So, I've, I've like we talked, I've noticed that too. Um, and that's why I've always said, that when I finally start putting out more videos, it's going to be more in-depth, uh, maybe longer videos. You know, a lot of people try to keep them under 15 minutes, really under 10 minutes. And That's you're just giving them, giving them a real quick overview. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just different 
different styles and I really want to get into the more the nitty gritty of the teaching and if it takes you know four hours to do that I'll break it up into you know 20 or 30 minute episodes and and show it over the course of a few weeks um and you know he said he said here Matt Cremona is a machine but one thing that that most people may not realize is Matt doesn't doesn't have a day job anymore Nope, he, he left since, it since like January, I think. Um, he's been doing this full time, and so doing it full time, it really gives you. I mean, it gives you at least eight hours more a day yeah. to <laughs> do this because it's your job. I mean, that's to, to face it, it, it. It's no longer your hobby. It is the bread and butter that's what puts the food on your table. So you have the 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 time and the opportunity to put out a video every week and a lot of mats are not build videos a lot of them his are, are weekly shop updates um and an overview of the projects he builds yeah what he's you know, got accomplished yeah, that particular well, week well and he sells his own lumber you know he cuts it and, ki- and, and puts it in the kiln and sells his own lumber so you know it, people you know, like Matt Cremona and, and Jay Bates, Steve Ramsey, um, Mark Spagnolo, they that is their day job. So they have the time to put out those videos every week versus all the rest of us that have day jobs and have to do this on the nights and weekends and still work in family time and dinner and yeah. and taking care of our own health because we can't <laughs> physically work twenty four hours a day every day. So yeah, Brian, you took off for a, a short while, didn't you? I mean, you, whenever, I, I don't know, I guess it was like last year maybe, I think you had changed jobs or something. and. Um, yeah, actually, I um, was it about a, let's see, about a year and a half ago, I switched jobs and I had to go for training in Germany for a month. Uh, so there was a good probably, I don't know, probably close to two months where I wasn't putting out anything. I was, you know, uh, getting ready and, uh, you know, th- there was a lot involved in that. So I couldn't, I had no time to invest in uh, getting out into the wood shop. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it it sucks not being in the shop. <laughs> yep. I'm, and, and even myself, I'm... I, ever since I changed jobs from where I used to work to now, it's um, I don't know. It's it's more mentally demanding, and it's very difficult to come home and try and change that that mental outlook to go out in the shop and and put in another two or three hours in front of a camera and then do the editing process. And it was getting to the point where it was starting to to put a strain on my time and my body because I was starting to get sick. And uh, had to, I had to take time time off from doing everything just so I can get better because I was losing sleep. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I if I had to kick exit signs, my job would be pretty stressful too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slow day. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, that, I didn't need that. Now you just totally ruined my whole thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess we all need an outlet at work somewhere, but yeah, you hey, know, I was I was dared. <laughs> you know, so like we've talked about, I mean, we'll probably hit it on every show. It, there's different. Everybody on YouTube has their own different way of doing something, and you know, some people enjoy getting that sh- that um, video out every week. In fact, I mean, some people do it twice a week. You know, like Jay Bates. And Steve Ramsey both put out two videos a week. Um, yeah, there's no way I could do that. Yeah, I mean, I just I can't put out a vlog video and a build video every week. Um, you know, I've always said, and I and I'm still going to stick to it. Is my goal is to write an article um, every week. You know, whether it be a build article. Um, or some kind of inspirational article, whatever it be. And then I want to do probably about two videos a month and probably three times a year. I really want to get into those bigger, uh, videos. Uh, you know, one of my goals is to build a rocking chair, not a sculpted rocker. I, I, that's, 
to a whole nother level that I don't want oh, to get into. Oh, come on. Right now. Nah, I want to do it. That's a bucket list project. But <laughs> right now, I just I, I want to build just like an older school rocking chair. Um, and I know there's some like Woodcraft sells a kit. Um, and so I don't know if I really want to do a kit or if I want to do it all from scratch. Um, a kit's more appealing to me right now. Um, just so I can kind of take the kit and then modify some of the design features on it. Um, but stuff like that, I want to do about three bigger videos a year. Um, and that's just because that's, that's my goal on it, you know, and, and, you know, Brian, you like putting out a video every week, right? I do. Um, I try to stay between, uh, two and four, uh, per month. Okay. So uh, like, for, for example, this month, last month, when, when I was working on the hall table, I was doing one, uh, two a week, two, yeah, excuse me, once, one per week. And, uh, I think, uh, this month I'm going to get out two for the whole month. Okay. So and it, nothing you know, wrong with that. <laughs> no. And it, and it goes based off of the project you're working on too. I mean, if, if it's a bigger project, you're obviously going to be able to put out a little more content, um, versus if you're going to do a, several smaller projects, um, then, you know, I don't really want to rush, you know, like you said, Drew, through that building that smaller project and trying to get that video out in a week. I want to like, I want to be able to build and record that all throughout seven days and then spend like the next five or six days editing it and, there you go. and not feel rushed. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to push myself till 2 a.m. trying to get things uploaded. Um, you know, so kind of give, give yourself two weeks to really work on one project. Um, and so that's, you know, really where I, I see myself going. And, and it, it's quite noticeable. I mean, Paul said it himself. He's seen some people take a step back, but I don't know if it's really getting burned out, but it's more people are, I've noticed people are doing bigger projects. You know, April's doing the bathroom vanity. Um, then you have Jay doing all the um, dimensional lumber projects for his guest room. You know, people right now are just taking on bigger projects. Um, and you're going to see it slow down a little bit throughout the summer. I mean, it's summer. People are taking vacations. Um, they're spending more time outside with kids and at parks and barbecues. They're not going to be holed up in the shop recording all the time like you do in the wintertime because there's not much else to do. Yeah, and this is kind of the slow time for subscribers. and, and Yes, uh, it, it yeah. really is. It, it slows down a lot. Yeah, You'll I mean, notice it, it. it. It slows down for me. I mean, I, it slows down on my watching content. You know, I don't – there, there's a select few that I have going straight into my RSS reader. Um and I watch those as they come out and you know, it, Brian and Drew, you both are one. Then I got like Steve and Jay, Mark, Matt, um, and David Picciuto. Other than that, there's a lot of, I got a lot of people like blog articles that come through there and I read those, um, every day. But as far as watching content through the summer, I don't get on and, and go through all my subscriber list. Um, but maybe once a month and then I'd spend, you know, eight hours going through all the content that I want to watch from, from all my s subscribers. So, hmm. all right. Well, you guys have anything else you want to add to that? No, I don't. Um, no, I think we covered it. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, if you would like your question answered on air, guaranteed, or you just want to hang out with us after the show, because, we are awesome. Or you just want to hang out with Brian. Uh, He's talking about it. just just me and him, uh, Brian. Okay. Not, yeah. You're the guest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to do that, you can become a patron over at patreon.com. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash woodshop101. And there's a, a load of different reward levels you can pick. Um, and each one gives you different perks. Um, you go anywhere from one dollar up to I think fifty dollars, um, and fifty dollars gets you a um, 
I think a either a turned mallet from me or a dead blow mallet from Drew. Um, somewhere around the twenty dollar range, I think you get a sticker, um, and it's a patron only sticker that nobody else is going to get a hold of. And Drew makes those himself. So, cool. and if you just want a, a for sure in way to talk to us, there's for the one dollar level, you jump in on the chat session that we have over there, and you can ask us any question. And those are pretty much answered as soon as we get them, um, or, or I say soon, about, about once a day or so, um, versus emails or something else. Uh, Facebook, those may not be answered for a few days, or you may not hear it at all because we put it on the show. So, all right, Brian, you want to tell us how everyone can contact you if they want to get a hold of you directly? Yeah, sure. Uh, if you go to garagewoodworks.com, you can find all of my contact information at the bottom of my uh, my main page. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, Google+, and, of course, uh, YouTube. Yeah, Brian's got a really good website, too. You guys need to check it out if you haven't. There's oh, a lot of you. good information there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Brian, one thing. I was on your website the other day. Um, do you have a search feature on your website? I do for my uh, video page. You can search by keywords or in the descriptions of the video or the title of the video. But other than that, uh, th- there's no other search. So I'm, I'm kind of in a quote-unquote challenge with a guy at work. I, I, I've really kind of gotten this guy. I've taken him under my wing and really got him into woodworking. And he's been on this kick of building everybody challenge coin displays. Hmm. Um, and, and right now they're all out of – dimensional lumber and and very basic and beginner and he uh great guy but he thought he'd be funny and pull a little practical joke on somebody else and so another guy we worked with has been begging him yo make me a coin display well he made him like this little triangle coin display that holds like one or two coins right and thought it would be so funny well it i was like well you know i'm gonna i'm gonna build one i'm gonna bring it in and like i'm gonna go extravagant and just like really make this guy be like, crap, I should have done better and hooked this dude up. And so I was looking at coin displays on on YouTube. And lo and behold, who's did I come across? Yours. Oh, cool. Um, and in the video, you said something about, um, you know, purchase some plans or, or go to the website for the plans. And so I went to the website and I could not find plans. So I went back into YouTube. I was like, I'm going to leave him a YouTube comment. <laughs> and <laughs> this lo and behold, like the first comment up there, somebody asked for plans and you wrote, I don't, I do not have plans for this. I was like, huh. but in the video, he said he had plans. Huh? I don't remember put, saying, uh, maybe I, uh, it's possible I did. And I just, maybe I meant to put out Yo, the plans. I, I thought I was going crazy. Cause I literally, I was like, man, <laughs> what, where, where do I search on his website? Like I, I got to find these plans. I don't. I, it's possible that I said that, and I just forgot all about it. I mean, that that video was what a couple of years ago. Uh, it was in. Uh, it was earlier this year, actually, in was February. It? I mean, you definitely were getting arrested because. Oh. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, I made that uh, that coin holder I made for my brother, who is a police officer in Virginia. Where at in Virginia? Uh, in Stafford County. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where I was at. I, I lived there for five years. Okay. In Stafford? No, I lived in um, York County, oh, okay. which is in like the Hampton Roads area on the peninsula. Right. Okay. All right. Huh. But yeah, so I uh, I, I saw that video and I was, I was really looking for some plans there. <laughs> hey, hey. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> So if you see an added dislike on that video, it's That's probably why. Jeremy. <laughs> nah, I, already, I think I already liked it. I, I generally don't, like I told you, Drew, I don't go get any one of your plans. I just figure it out from your video. <laughs> That's probably Thanks. why that jig's still in my shop unfinished. <laughs> so. All right, Drew, well, you want to tell everybody how they can get in contact with us? Most definitely. Um a lot of the things that you guys will probably see in the show notes is a, is a good way to contact. Uh, we're basically on uh, iTunes, YouTube, as well as uh, woodshop101podcast.com slash listen. You can see the episodes there. You can comment there. We'll, we'll be able to answer anything that you have. 
Um, and also, whenever you visit those places, don't forget to subscribe to those. It'll help get us into the public eye. Uh, sponsorships in the future will be more prevalent. Um, so we would appreciate any feedback that you guys can give us and share us with the, with the community out there. And uh, if you have a question, you can email it to us at woodshop101podcast at gmail.com. Or, like I said, you can leave us comments in those other locations. Um, Skype, uh, we believe, I'm hoping Jeremy's got this fixed, uh, the voicemail feature through Skype. Uh, you can just search Woodshop 101 Podcast and leave us a voicemail there. And uh, if you do so, we will announce that on air, and you will be able to hear yourself ask the question, and then we will answer it for you. Uh, we post new episodes about every two weeks. Uh, sometimes, if we're running late, it'll be every week. <laughs> we just experienced that this time. Uh, so we hope to hear from you guys with uh, feedback and uh, from Jeremy and myself and our special guest, Brian. And thanks a lot for being on the show again, Brian. We greatly yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, remember to be safe in your shops, and we will see you guys next time. And our, our we do a specific sign-off here, Brian. I know you're probably familiar with it uh, by watching my videos, <laughs> but, but we give everybody a, a little sign-off boom. Okay. All right. <laughs> so how does that go? Uh, just on the count of three. One, two, three. Boom. 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 <laughs>